Hey y'all, it's time for a little crop update. A lot of y'all have been asking me about my potatoes. Everybody's wanting to get some of them new potatoes. They're almost ready. They're just not quite there. They are the size that y'all like them. Everybody in South Georgia likes these potatoes about golf ball size, and they know what time of year those potatoes get that size. So everybody's been about to knock my door down wanting these taters. But we have one issue. If I were to dig my taters right now, the skin will come off very easily. So I have to mow these vines off, let it sit out here for about two weeks to let the skin sit. If I dig that potato while it's still growing and that skin is still elastic, that skin is still stretching over that growing potato, that skin will wipe off very easily. You don't want a damaged potato. You don't want a potato with no skin on it in your pantry. So you gotta let me get out here and mow these taters down. They finally reached the size we want. We're gonna get in here and mow them well, maybe middle of this week. I got the irrigation running right now. It's going to come by here in about 12 hours. It'll be here about 12 hours from now. I started this morning about 7.30. And it's got a, it's on about 25 hour circle. So it, it'll get here tonight. And uh, once it's dry enough behind it, you know, I won't be able to come in here right behind it, Mom. Once it's dry enough after it's come through here, we will get in here and mow these taters. It's really warm down here in South Georgia this time of year. It's around 85. And um, I may have an issue with them trying to regrow. So I do have a gigantic silage tarp. And we may drag that thing out here and cover an area so that it gets no sunlight whatsoever. The plant's been mowed off. Got a heavy load of taters pulling on under the ground and no way to make photos, photosynthesis, no way to feed those taters. That should kill the vine. Once the vines kill, 10, 15 days, that skin will be set and y'all be ready to eat some of these good taters. As we're going along here, this is how we know the taters are ready. The ground is cracking open. We see it cracking open all through here. That means we got a load of new potatoes under that dirt. What I've noticed out here is my Kennebex, my Kennebex have a lot of blooms on top right now. And I've been told those Kennebex will actually, uh, the vine will kill off after blooming on its own. It's not gonna require action on my part. But these, these are Pontiacs. And right over here, I got Red Lasota. And Red Lasota is an improved Pontiac. And both of these versions, both of these two varieties will have to be killed. They will keep on trying to go so we got to shut them back, shut them down, make them stop growing so we can harden off these taters. I've been pretty fortunate so far with my taters with the deer right here, not developing a taste for them yet, but the deer down here will tote you off, man. They will tote you off with anything you grow. They used to not eat cotton, but 10 years ago, they developed a taste for cotton and started eating their cotton. Deer eat anything you grow down here. Uh, don't nobody grow taters around here, so uh, deer don't know nothing about the taters yet, but I imagine if I plant them another couple of years, deer start eating taters. Um, they've been working on my peas, they're messing up my sweet peas, they've started messing up my green beans and my butter beans. So it's time to get serious about some deer control. The way I do it, you go to the dollar store, you get the cheapest perfume they got that day. I got towels and rags and different things all around the field hung up in the trees on the edges and we kind of come in here and we spray them down with the loudest cheapest cologne and perfume we can find and you got to use a different cologne different perfume every single week because the deer get used to it deer say hey i've been out there i smell that smell and i didn't see no people out there i think it's fine that that field just smells like that so you got to change your scent every week or the deer get used to it we have some uh, cannons that we use, power, power, powered by propane tanks. They go off at random intervals. It's not a time thing. It just kind of goes off randomly. Deer get used to that, and they get used to anything. We hunt them at night with thermal imaging. We killed two years ago on this half of the field. This, is, this half is, or this part is 26 acres. Uh, during the deer season and with the summer permit and everything all said and done combined, we killed over 50 deer on this 26 acres and the population increased you heard me correctly we killed 50 deer on 26 acres and the population was bigger the following year so we're getting swallowed up by whitetail deer down here and they are they are thicker than fleas on a dog's back down here in south georgia y'all need to come kill some deer 
last year on the peas I had about uh, probably about 15 12 to 15 acre spot of damage where there was zero harvest the deer wiped out completely wiped out 12 to 15 acres that's uh if you farm a thousand acres 12 15 that ain't, ain't that bad but man I ain't farming a thousand acres of peas last year I planted 35 acres of peas and butter beans and the deer wiped out 15 of them a strong portion of my uh, bottom line that got wiped out by deer so we do everything we can to try to combat that if any of y'all run into me later on and you're wondering why I smell so good watch this video I don't normally smell like this so this is my blue lake bush beans they are blooming right now we are not far off i normally harvest these about mother's day we may maybe week after mother's day we have to wait and see it's coming up pretty quick but we came in here and plowed these middles dad did uh last week he uh has a little knocker box rig where it drops fertilizer right by the row and runs a plow right behind it so we uh plowed in a little bit of fertilizer tried to combat this nut grass a little bit but blue lakes looking good i think my roma twos are actually looking a little better so this is a roma two notice all them stems with no leaves on them that's what the deer are doing coming here and cropping the top out and that's right where my blooms are so they'll come in here and just crop them blooms off and i'll never make a crop and it is they walked right down this row cropping every one of them right down the row overall though these roma twos are getting a little taller than the blue lakes they look a little better but the deer seem to prefer the roma twos to the blue lakes which is strange the Roma 2s, uh, I had a very tough time getting seed this year. You'll see I have a skippy stand. This seed was actually two years old. I could not find seed anywhere in South Georgia. I had to end up getting my Roma 2 seed from Nevada. I had to bring the seed all the way in from Nevada. When it got here, it was very obvious that it was seed that had been left in their warehouse a while. I'm being generous when I say it was two years old. And it came up so hey you know it didn't come up as thick as i wanted but it, it did come up we will have something to harvest out here we were not as lucky with some of our pea seed pea seed was very very hard to get this year and when i got the pea seed i don't know if y'all watched the earlier videos when i was planting my peas they were not treated this year using usually, usually my pea seed is treated i think i had one variety come treated this year the ovens were not treated you say it's not not that big of a deal well the seed treatment prevents disease we had a cool night out here where after they were planted and had came up for about one to two hours it dropped down around 40 degrees and the non-treated seeds did not make it disease set in and i lost what was planted at that time i lost a significant portion of it luckily i planted my peas in five different plantings i plant wait two or three days four days plant wait a few days plant so i staggered my planting but when that uh cool event came in and caused disease out here it ended up killing the plants for about two weeks after that they would slowly die they get disease they turn yellow they just sit there and then after a little while they would die it wasn't like a frost event where you get a frost on them and they're dead that day this took a couple weeks to kill them because it it got disease started in the field and it wiped out i bet i lost a third of my crop uh to that uh, seed disease a third of it total loss no harvest there's no plants in that part of the field it is bare ground those seed came up they were here disease set in peas died so treated seed is very important because of the issues i had getting seed this year i will be growing pea seed this year i will not harvest all my peas to sell fresh market or my green beans i will be saving seed i will be getting my seed treated and we will be planting from the seed we raised on this farm these are my sedandy and my elite southern peas this is the third planting of the year 
you'll see we got some pretty serious thrip damage. Thrip is a tiny, tiny uh, bug. You have to bring a sheet of white paper right here and hold it right beside the plant. And you can knock the plants over on it and you'll see something that's smaller than a flea. Really, really tiny and orange and be crawling around that white paper. That's thrips. This is what thrip damage looks like. And it will it'll slow the plant down a little bit. It's not going to kill the plant or cause any thing with the fruit it's just going to wrinkle the leaves up and uh slow it down right now this is my top pick pink eye purple holes these peas always come up good if you want to plant something in your garden that you know will look good and will grow good plant you some pink eye purple hole peas there is no pea easier to grow than a pink eye purple hole it is the far and away the easiest pea to grow every year when i plant these Three days later, it looks like every seed comes up. By far the easiest pea to grow. When it gets later in the year, if you have cowpea curculios though, the cowpea curculio is a small, uh, tiny weevil, and it loves, it loves crowder peas. It loves these dark peas. It loves these purple holes. So if you had the cowpea curculio, you're going to have to maybe consider whether or not you want to plant them. But if you don't have cowpea curculios or you have a way to combat the cowpea curculios, pink eye purple holes are the easiest peas to grow. These are my zipper peas and you will notice there's a little one coming up. A lot of gaps in this uh, stand here. I have a problem growing zipper peas i don't have a problem selling zipper peas i have a problem growing zipper peas once i get the stand up they're they're pretty easy then but man i cannot get a stand of zippers i plant them every year we've planted them with plates in the uh planter we've planted them with pickup fingers uh bean cups we plant them every way you can plant them trying to treat the seed a different way so we don't crush the seed try, try to baby it and uh nothing works we cannot get a stand of zippers just for example here, zipper peas, pink eye purple holes. These things were planted three minutes apart, same conditions. Every seed come up, purple holes, large gaps in the row, zippers. We have a difficult time getting our zipper peas to come up. They are uh, my favorite pea to eat. A lot of my customers really like these zippers, especially if they can get the immature zippers. That in itself is a little bit of a problem though. I know some of y'all uh, custom order or special order my immature zippers. That is the best pea I grow. The people that get the immature zippers only want the immature zippers for then on. But the zipper pea is the only non machine harvest pea I grow that is the only hand harvest pea I grow and so I am completely dependent upon hand labor to gather those zippers at the correct stage and that is a challenge in South Georgia this is my butter beans y'all I know some of y'all gonna call them lima beans but if you're buying them from me they're called butter beans that's what we call them down south we got about 20 acres of butter beans right here and i do have a fair stand right here i'd, I'd say it's, it's pretty good but there are, there are some sections out there where it didn't work as good we have some sections where, where uh we didn't get the success rate we needed i'm not sure what caused that uh problem but it's uh it's strangely it's not on the red dirt the red dirt which is usually a crust over and get too hard and the, the crop can't push through this red dirt turn into concrete they pushed through on that and then on the lighter dirt they didn't come up you know we we had the moisture there they just didn't come up i don't know what the issue was but on our red dirt portions of the field we got an excellent stand on the lighter dirt parts we did not get as good of a stand as we wanted but i think we're still going to be all right we uh we got 20 acres of them if if we can uh sell 20 acres of butter beans and still need some more i, I got a couple of farmers that i know uh, around south georgia i can call on they'll help me fill whatever orders i can't fill and we'll make sure all y'all get them butter beans y'all need well that's it for the crop update i hope y'all enjoyed it y'all keep following along uh watch these crops as they grow so you'll know when they're ready thank y'all for watching see you next time